in the 12th chapter. And I want to look at just three verses tonight, uh, primarily on uh, 2 Corinthians 12th chapter, verses 7 through 10. Paul ran here and he said, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity, in reproach, in necessity, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the great privilege of being with your people in your house. And we come together and mm. use our voices as one and praising and worshiping you. And it's all we pray tonight. If there be needs here tonight that's unknown, to, that you would meet those needs. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. So, from the cradle to the grave, we spend so much of our time trying to avoid pain. You know, if, if you watch very much TV, you see all these commercials, and two out of three of them is for pain relief. You know, everybody's in, in pain and they're taking all this medicine for it and uh, so they offer all this advice on how to manage pain. And such solutions though are, are temporary. And there are some people, they try to escape all the pain by going down to the bar and, and they drink there and they get them a fifth on the way home and all these things and then others inject stuff into their body and uh, but in, instead of, of the pain being subdued by the alcohol and the drugs what it does is it increases yes. and so they find that their pain just gets worse and worse and worse and so instead of uh, disparaging and that some just grin and bear it. You know, so let me ask you this question. And there'll be as many answers as there are individual problems. How do you manage pain? Uh, the Apostle Paul, who I think was the greatest Christian who ever lived, he experienced such gross pain. And there are several theories about the nature of his thorn in the flesh. Remember how he talked about that? And there were some people that speculated that, that it was a form of re recovering from malaria that, uh, that produced all of the serious headaches. Others speculated that it was a, a form of epilepsy that, that resulted from his uh, temporary blindness. Remember he was temporary blind uh, uh, for a while. And then still others proposed that it was a, a problem of the eye. And they said that Paul's thorn in the flesh was a, the problem of the eye. And uh, they said that because Paul said this in Galatians 4.15. He said, where is then the blessedness you speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and had given them to me. And in 6 and 11, he, he said this, you see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand? And then you might also want to look at, at chapter 4, 12, verse 7 through 9, and just read. In any case, Paul experienced such great suffering because of this thorn in the flesh. And Paul also recognized something. He recognized that Satan uses pain to do several things. Yes. The first thing he does, he uses pain to hurt you and then to hinder you. 
And so Paul spoke of this thorn in, in the flesh, and he said it was absolutely a message from Satan or of Satan. And Satan uses pain to make people doubt God's goodness. That's the whole thing. You, you ever hear people say, well, I prayed about this headache and it won't go away. I prayed about this and I don't know why God won't heal me and all of these things. Uh, but Satan, all he wants to do is inject doubt into our minds and he injects that, mindful, that doubt for one reason. He wants us to distrust the character and the behavior of our Heavenly Father. Amen. And so, as a result of that, and Satan tries to foster both bitterness and hate because of that pain that he uses. And so we have to always be on guard. Uh, we on guard against the, uh, the strategies of that old devil because he's out to destroy us. And you said, well, why does he want to destroy me? Because he is the enemy of God and our enemy as well. Yes. First Peter five verse eight and nine says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour. Yes. Whom resist stand fast in the faith, knowing." that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And so if Satan can make us mad, if he can get us good and mad at God and, and to react with bitterness toward either God or, or to other people, he is leading us down a path of self-destruction. Let me say that again. Devil can make us mad at God. He is leading us down the path of self-destruction. And, and Paul believed something. Paul believed that God would use this thorn in the flesh to do one thing. He, he, he believed that God would use that to strengthen his character. And so understand this. Paul's thorn in the flesh was not punishment for sin. I have heard that preached, and that is one of the biggest lies that can be preached. Nowhere in the Bible is, is that sin. In fact, Paul's thorn in the flesh kept him from becoming proud, from becoming arrogant, and self-sufficient. As, as I said earlier, I think Paul was the greatest Christian that ever lived. Mm -hmm. Look how, how mightily God used him to do the things that he did. And so Paul prayed for the removal of the, the thorn. And because Paul was a man of great faith and prayer, he believed in bringing every problem, no matter how large or how small it was, to, to God's throne of grace. Mm -hmm. And he brought it there for two reasons. Yep. One for help and second for mercy. And three times we, we know of that Paul prayed for relief from the agony of, of this painful thorn in, in his flesh. I don't know how many other times, but the Bible tells us three times that, that he did. And I thought about that. Paul prayed three times for the removal of, of the thorn in the flesh. Jesus prayed three times for, for the removal of the cup of suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane. There is he faced the agony of crucifixion on, on that following day. Three times he prayed for the removal. The Bible says that the angels came and that they ministered to him. And while the angels came, the angels ministered to him, but that cup was not removed. And Paul's present prayer for the removal of that thorn was not granted. That's right. And saying that, when you pray for the relief from the pain that 
that plagues your body. It, it seems like there's just no answer to it. What will you do? What can you do? Cast it out in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because you, you can't ignore the pain because pain is no illusion. You know, uh, this, this one friend of mine in town of Hester, he, he, he didn't believe there was much pain. You know, and, and I said, if you're talking about taking a BC to get rid of it and all this stuff, I'm pretty much going to agree with you. But the uh, but there is pain, and he said, well, most of it people brought on their sales, and I said, well, I'm not going going there with you. But uh, you know, I, I thought about that this week, and I said, you know. Paul did one thing. He used every possible resource that he had for the management of his pain. But now, remember one thing. Remember Luke. You see, Luke was a physician. And he was also Paul's traveling missionary. They traveled together. And they travel all throughout Asia Minor. And on many of his journeys from then until he died in Rome, Paul did one thing. Paul accepted pain as something that was permitted by the Lord, by the will of God, even when he couldn't understand it. He didn't understand it, but he said God is allowing this for some other reason. And, uh, you know, you, you think about that, and and God doesn't just decide, like, well, oh, Joe, he did this, I'll just give him a headache for two weeks, and he'll mind me next time. But God doesn't operate that way. But... But Paul offered thanksgiving to God in most of the situation. In all of his pain, as hurting as bad as he was, whatever the thorn in the flesh was, in all of his pain, he found things that he could thank God for. His words to the Thessalonians, I believe, are appropriate at, at this point. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 and 18. Paul said this, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. None other. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, when you are searching for something to be thankful for in the midst of all this pain, that creates a very positive way of thinking, doesn't it? And it creates in you an open mind and a, a heart through which God can minister to us in our times of, of need. And Paul made the, the most of everything that he did. He made the best of every day, no matter the pain and the agony that he was in. And so he, one thing he did, he tried not to let yesterday distress him for today. And so he tried not to worry about tomorrow. You know, the old saying is it, so true. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You know? And so Paul didn't didn't do that. He didn't let bitterness rule and run him when he he uh, the pain was throbbing throughout his body. And there's a dramatic illustration of this matter in which he dealt with pain. And it's revealed here in the experience of, of the Philippian jail. Here he was in the Philippian jail and he had suffered such a a cruel beating, both he and Silas. And they were praying. And they're saying praises unto God. Yep. 
and the fruit of your harvest. Acts 16, 25. And so what Paul did, was doing is Paul believed that through Jesus Christ he could overcome all the painful circumstances of life. And Philippians 4, 13 says, one of the greatest verses in the world, what Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. You know, so many people have a false impression that if they just try to be good, try to do right, that God will exempt them from all the pain, all the suffering. They won't ever have any problems uh, because after all, I'm serving God. But that way of thinking is, first of all, that's very unrealistic. And most importantly, it's unbiblical. The Bible nowhere teaches that. It is just contrary to the experience of the great saints. Jesus came to help people with the pain that they suffer. Now, we don't have any record in the scriptures of, of Jesus turning away from, from those who were sick and pain. But he healed the sick. We have so many records where he healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He gave hearing to the deaf. He enabled the lame and crippled the wall. And then we, he gave us, in his love and kindness, he told him how to face the pain that comes our way. That's what he does. He, he told us that. We can be absolutely assured that God's blessing will rest on our, on our doctors and modern medical facilities. And, uh, and we should not hesitate to to seek those services as we cope with pain. I, I, I know God can heal anything. You can be on your deathbed and he can give you 20 more years. That's right. But God does use, give a common sense. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to go down and get a shot or a, a doctor's got a pill that will work. You know, and I understand God can do it. But God uses those doctors to do that. It's just unrealistic and it's unbiddable to, uh, to do otherwise. Jesus came, like I said, he came to help his people with pain. But he, he, and he gave sight to the blind, he gave hearing to the deaf. He enabled the, the lame to, to walk. But we can be absolutely 1,000% assured that God's blessing will rest on those doctors. Now, like I just said, the, 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 they, they may be some quacks, but they, been, they can do God uses doctors to, to cure. And so Jesus also came to help us cope with the pain of, of being fallen creatures. That's what he came for. Mistake makers, sinners who are lost and don't know the way home. There you go. Jesus Christ came for those reasons. And Jesus came to help us to cope with our incompetence, our spiritual deadness toward God. Yes. I wish I could name the times that people have told me, well, I prayed that it didn't do any good. Uh, a guy told me that not too long ago, and I said, well, I'm hearing what you're saying. I said, but I got one question to ask you. I said, have you ever been saved? He said, what do you mean by being saved? Yeah, that's why I couldn't get none. Yeah. I said, well, have you ever asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of all your sins? to save you from your burning hell and place you in his heaven. No, I don't believe that. Well, I said, well, get mad with me if you will. 
but you're going to keep on with the pain you got. God is they're trying to get your attention. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be healed just like that, but I can tell you this, you won't go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And in heaven, there won't be any pain. And he said, I knew you'd get around to that. I said, oh yeah, sit still and the offering's coming next. Because I knew that's what he was saying. Yeah. And so that, they said, well, if you, you pay the preacher, you get this and you get that and, and all that. And I wish some of them would try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would you pray on that?